Hey guys, Hobbs here again, this time bringing you the Vanguard, or the Manguard, or the Cupcake, one of those three, that's what we all call it. But yeah, this is going to be the introduction to the heavy mechs in the game, and I'd say the Vanguard's easy, the default, and you can pause right here for the mech stats and take a look if you want, but yeah, like I said, the Vanguard's very good for a first heavy mech. Uh, I'll explain why in a little bit, but if there's any, I know it's a bit more expensive than the Brawler, but trust me, you're gonna want to get this as your first heavy mech. But uh, yeah, we're gonna launch in a little bit, so all right, let's get let's get right into it. Now I know that the Brawler is cheaper than the Vanguard, so for an initial, for like a, another, like if your first heavy mech, I, it's a bit more tempting to go for the Brawler because it is cheaper. But I can tell you this right now, as far as gameplay is concerned, the Vanguard is a lot more forgiving than the van than the Brawler. Uh, mainly because the, the Vanguard is faster than the Brawler. If, as far as heavy mechs go, the Vanguard is like the fastest of the heavy mechs. So transitioning from like light mechs or uh, from medium mechs, uh, it, it'll it'll feel a little bit less uh, ham. You you won't feel as hamstring on speed as you do versus like if you start with the Brawler. And plus the weapons on the the Vanguard are a bit more easy to use. Like the primary weapon is the SMC, which you're very familiar with, and the grenade launcher, which is the secondary weapon. It's not much different than the tow rocket. It, it differs slightly, but you know I'll go over the, uh, that in a little bit. Now, the, now the ability on the Vanguard is called the mobile turret, and a lot of the other heavy mechs have it. But essentially, what it does is that you, know, you transform into the turret. You probably saw me do it a little bit earlier, and you trade off speed for defense. And I'll go into this a little bit more. But I can tell you this right now, off the bat, this turret mode, don't use it too much. Most new guys just like to stay hunkered down in that turret mode, and that is one of the biggest mistakes they can make. I mean, it, it'll work for a while, but you'll just be ridiculously slow, you won't be able to keep up with your team, and as soon as you, your team gets away from you, and you're stuck alone, that turret mode will be the death of you. Just trust me on this, okay? See, what happens is, like I said, you trade mobility for defense and like I said in this game mobility is king so a lot of the times your mobility is what's gonna save your life not having high defense and or anything like that in fact even in heavy mechs you see me dodging a lot here don't don't think that you can just tank all the damage and you just be like Rambo and just you know reckless no 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 that does that's not what it is heavy mechs are much more forgiving as far as you taking damage however being reckless with your positioning and being at the wrong place at the wrong time, they are much more punishing in that regard. Because, like with light mechs, they don't have much armor, so as, to, as far as like movement and stuff like that, you can't make many errors. However, if you end up in a bad spot, you can easily get out of, you can easily just get out of dodge and then, you know, run away, regroup with your team fairly easily. Heavy mechs, no. If you get stuck in a bad situation, you're kind of stuck there. You have to deal with what you got because it's just no, you're not going to be able to get away in a heavy mech, you're just too slow. Alright, and and so what the turret mode does is that it makes you very slow and then you're not going to be able to escape out of a bad situation and the turret mode amplifies that by a lot more. But again, talking about that a little bit later, I'm going to go over the grenade launcher now. Now, the grenade launcher is pretty much like a tow rocket, but it differs in a couple regards. One, it fires a little bit slower. Uh, like as far as projectile speed and uh, the reload speed. Uh, the reload speed for the tow is 2.25 seconds. The reload speed for the grenade launcher is actually 2.5 seconds. And so, and well, the reason for that is the grenade launcher it has more utility to it. The grenade can be bounced around corners and it has an arc to it, so it can be shot up and over and into somebody's face. Uh, you don't have to have a direct line of sight like you would with the tow rocket in most cases. And the grenade launcher also has a much bigger blast radius. And so the only really adjustments that you need to make for firing the tow is uh, when you use the grenade launcher for further targets, aim a little bit higher, and also aim a little bit further down and compensate for the slower speed of the grenade. But other than that, it's got a bigger blast radius, so it'll be a little bit easier to land the splash damage on them. And that, those are the main differences between the tow rocket and the grenade launcher, but the grenade launcher is still an amazing weapon. And the SMC is pretty simple, so you guys already know how to know it, don't know how to use it, so I don't really need to explain it that much. You know. We're going to be moving on to the alternate weapon pretty soon here, right at the clip end, so, alright, I'll go continue with that. Oh yeah, one small thing I forgot to mention, the grenade launcher actually does have the air burst, just like the tow rocket does, so just remember, hit middle mouse or the right button, the right mouse button again to detonate it, 
the grenade in midair, or like the grenade, since it can bounce on the ground, you can detonate it when it's sitting on the ground too. You can use it kind of like a mine, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But as you see right here, this is the alternate weapon that unlocks at rank 3. This is the mini flak cannon. Now it's pretty good with the Vanguard, because the Vanguard, uh, sorry I didn't mention this earlier, but the Vanguard actually specializes in close combat and uh, assault and kind of assault slash defense, uh, point defense. If all the heavy mechs I'd say are very much defensive, it's better to wait for the battle to come to you. Especially in the Vanguard, however, is a little bit better at being able to go charge in and then assault a point. It's a bit more designed for that because it's a bit faster and the weapons uh, on it are designed to output a lot of DPS. Like the mini flat cannon has the highest DPS out of all the weapons that the Vanguard has it'll deal the most damage over the longer period of time and so but however it generates a lot a lot of heat and if you miss your shots uh, you're basically generating a lot of heat for nothing so be careful with the mini flat cannon try to make sure you land your shots I usually don't hold it the automatic fire mode I usually try to shoot one at a time uh, I semi fire it just so I don't miss my shots. That's just me, preferably. I only usually use the auto fire mode when I'm at mid range so I know I won't miss my shots because at close range, if I miss a lot of my shots, it can just kill me. But yeah, like the high heat generation is something you really gotta watch out for. Okay, now going on a little bit more into piloting technique. Uh, if you haven't noticed this already, but different class mechs, the medium, the lights, and the heavy mechs, they actually have different turning speeds. So the, the light mechs, they turn the fastest. The medium mechs kind of are in the middle, and the heavy mechs, they turn the slowest, so remember this. So in very close combat, sometimes light mechs will be able to dash around you, and you're going to have a hard time hitting them because of uh, you won't be able to turn to face them as much. So when, you ha when you're in a heavy mech, you can go close range, but keep a little bit of distance on it. <laughs> Sorry, some, well, a friend of mine was uh, he contacted me on Steam, but you know. Oh well. Anyways, back to the video. But yeah, just remember, uh, keep a little bit of space between you and an opponent, especially a light mech, because they might be able to just, you know, circle straight around you, confuse you, and you, you'll lose sight on them, and that can be very, very bad, especially when you're facing a light mech. You do not want to get shot in the rear end. Which also, and just speaking about turning speeds, this brings me back to the ability, the, uh, mobile turret and so uh, I'll go into more detail about what the mobile turret does what the mobile turret does is that it reduces any incoming damage from the front and on the Vanguard that damage reduction is by 60% so uh, you'll only be taking 40% of the normal damage when you're in this turret mode but that's only from the front if you get shot in the rear end however you take 20% extra damage so the incoming damage from behind will be 120 percent so you can see where it can be very bad and even there you s against an entire team that 60 percent damage reduction uh, my health still dropped pretty fast and so like i said if you get caught alone the enemy team can easily try to get behind you and then shoot you in your very very squishy rear end and you're dead I, I do it all the time in my Berserker or any of my light mechs. I can easily jump over a heavy mech's head because they just cannot turn to face me. Because, you know, one thing, I mean, they, they turn slower uh, just normally, but in that turret mode, they turn even slower as a way to balance that. So, And plus, you can only boost in the turret mode. You can boost forward, but you cannot dodge. And I've already said it before, dodging is what will save your life, not... Uh, not having a high, uh, not having a high defense. So remember, mobility over defense. The what, the, how you use the turret though is if your team's backing you up, you can use it to lead a charge and provide them cover because you're going to be able to soak up some of the damage while they can deal out damage behind you, and you know they'll cover your rear end so you don't get taken out that way. It's best used with a team. One-on-one -on -one situations, you do not want to, you want to avoid using it. Unless you're in a very tight hallway where they cannot jump over you, like sometimes like in the tunnels, like here on Wreckage, there's like a little tunnel, or maybe on Origin. And if, the, if you know for sure that your enemy cannot get behind you, then the turret mode can, is viable at that point. But other than that, you're going to want to be able to dodge, because that will save your life more than anything. I will say this though, the Vanguard's turret mode is the most forgiving out of all the other turret modes, so if you goof around with it a little bit, eh... It's less likely to get you killed than the other turret modes, but still, use it sparingly and use it with your team, not alone. 
because alone it can really kill you. And, and yeah, and in a heavy mech, you always want to stick with your team because these are very because heavy mechs will need support. But yeah, because uh, you know heavy mechs can get very can get overwhelmed very easily. Now. Here, we're moving on to the next weapon, the Prestige weapon, which is the Point D Vulcan. Again, you can use the Mech Shredder on the Vanguard. Now, it's very useful. Now, you can see me using the turret mode here, which is actually good, because like I said, I have my... Which is good, because I have my team behind me, and it can give me some supporting fire. But right there is like, no, I want to get out of there. And so, I'm try to keep up. So, but yeah, the Vulcan on the Vanguard is actually pretty de is actually pretty decent, because, you know... Uh, it's like the SMC. The SMC is like a really solid weapon, but the only thing you gotta watch out for on using the Vulcan here is your heat generation. And because if you overheat on the Vanguard, it's pretty darn punishing, especially in a heavy mech. I mean, you're already kind of slow, and if you don't have weapons, you're kind of dead. But you know, uh, but yeah, if you've ever watched any of my previous videos involving the Vulcan, you know, pretty much similar strategy there. Although this is a heavy mech, so you kind of want to wait for people to kind of come to you when you're using this weapon instead of trying to rush people at it because you're just, you know, if you're trying to rush somebody, you're going to move kind of slow and so they're going to be able to shoot at you for a while before you're, there, before you're able to close in close enough to where you can actually use the Vulcan. So, uh, the Vulcan here is used a bit more defensively or, as I said before, for surprise, which is great. You can flank in heavy mechs too, which actually works out really, really well. I mean, if a Berserker does a flanking maneuver, it's pretty darn effective. If a Vanguard flanks you, oh man, that is not something easy to deal with. Getting flanked by a heavy mech is just, it can be disastrous. But if you are that flanking heavy, it can be so much fun. I love flanking my heavy mechs. But yeah, the Point D Vulcan, uh, like I said, you, you should, guys should be pretty familiar with it, so I don't really need to explain this anymore. So, as far as the Vanguard and what it's used for, it is used a bit more aggressively than the other heavy mechs. So... Uh, but the one thing you kind of want to avoid is trying to chase down mechs too much because you don't want to end up in front of that entire enemy team <laughs> and then as soon as all that enemy team sees you alone they're just gonna come at you like a swarm and then heavy mechs if they get swarmed they're not gonna be able to escape that swarm because they just they just can't move fast enough so be very, very careful. You do not want to overextend and be at the wrong place at the wrong time in a heavy mech because that will be the death of you. So always try your best to stick with your team so you don't get overwhelmed and surrounded because a heavy mech surrounded is just bad. Because like I said, you're slow, you're a pretty big target, so all those people are going to have a real easy time shooting you. And getting shot by more than one person is just, no, it's never, never fun. If you only have one person shooting at you, it's one thing. But having more than one, no, it doesn't matter how much dodging in the world. If you're in a heavy mech, you're just you're just gonna take shots no matter what. It's it's really it's impossible to dodge fire coming from two directions. Even inside of a light mech, I, it's very very hard for even me to dodge that to dodge two people shooting at me unless they're in the same exact direction. That's different. But yeah, if you're getting shot from multiple directions, it's just no. That's just a bad thing. Now, as far as the different playstyles on uh, this mech, they're actually all pretty similar for the different weapons. Uh, if anything, I'd say the one that has the most range would be the SMC, because, you know, like I said, it's meant to be kind of an all-rounder. But then the, uh, the, the Mini Flak and then the Vulcan, they're very much close range weapons. That's where you want to really get in and be nasty. So, but the main difference is there is do you want a shotgun or do you want a machine gun? Because, like I said, with the mini flak, it has the higher uh, damage per second output. But, you know, if you're missing your shots, you're just generating heat for nothing. Whereas the Vulcan, you're probably going to land more of your shots. But, you know, it does have, it doesn't output as much damage as the mini flak can. Like, the mini flak can is the only weapon in the game that will actually output the Vulcan as far as damage per second. Except for, I think, maybe... Uh, 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 don't worry about that. Maybe it's one of the incinerator weapons, but I'll, again, uh, that's for a different video. And again, just gonna go over my items internals. Yes, I still have them the same as the shield, the repair charge, and the hologram. So, you know, the sh shield is very good for helping you uh, get some, get a little bit of extra cover. 
the repair charge will heal you up and the hologram well that is that's that's more for fun I'm probably gonna put something more useful there when I save up the credits to get it and as far as internals again uh, I recently did an internal switch so my the internals that I use are the basic deflectors the evasive device and then the air compressor yes I even use air compressors on my uh, heavy mix because I use it much more for smoothness and ease of control more so than like you know going in the air because it's a heavy mech. It's not gonna fly. I'm sorry, but you know, if you're in the air a lot as a heavy mech, you're kind of dead. So, but this is like, but that's in case like I need to remove someone's height advantage, so I can still dodge. Or if I'm trying to, you know, in the rare case I need to escape in my heavy mech, I can, you know, still pull off some fancy maneuvers. And the basic deflectors, you know, get some extra defense, like when I'm dodging boosting. And the evasive device, if my health is low, I get a little bit of a speed boost, so I can get away. But yeah. And so, yeah, that's basically the Vanguard. That's the introduction to all the heavy mechs. Uh, yeah, so right now, that's pretty much finishing up. Probably the next mechs I'll be doing are probably the Reaper or the Bruiser, but yeah. For now, this is Soldier Hobbs, signing off.